Um, appreciate uh, the opportunity to uh, get back together with some of these folks that uh, we've known for years. Um, you know, um, <clears throat> I started out uh, getting into the uh, satellite program uh, really back at uh, Weber State University in uh, in Utah uh, due to uh, a, a gentleman named Gilbert Moore who come to us there and said, hey, I would like to uh, encourage you to uh, get a student group together and, and build a satellite for me. And uh, uh, that uh, proceeded in uh, getting the development of a satellite called NewSat-1. And uh, it was an education for both the, uh, the students and uh, the uh, professors and a, a, a very uh, ambitious group of um, <clears throat> of uh, mentors. Um, the thing that we learned uh, is that it it was really a good program to get some practical training for the students. And um, I uh, worked at uh, Weber State uh, in launching two different satellites, one on the space uh, ch uh, space shuttle Challenger, and then on the the Arian 4 at the time. And then I uh, transferred to uh, Stanford University and uh, there we started working on uh, <clears throat> microsats again and um, finally come to the conclusion that uh, uh, the larger the spacecraft, the longer it takes to build it and the more the, the students keep putting things in it. So uh, with the help of, uh, of Jordy, uh, down at Cal Poly, we had looked at uh, wanting to do something smaller and uh, we come up with the idea of having a, essentially a, a 10 centimeter cube. Uh, and uh, Jordy, along with his students, did a tremendous job in taking an idea and making it a reality. And um, it ended up that uh, in 2003, we got our first launch of uh, CubeSats. So it it was uh, a, an exciting adventure that uh, expanded much farther than we thought, at least I thought it would. I <clears throat> was very interested in it from the, uh, uh, from the concept of, of educating the students. And uh, we all know that uh, uh, if a professor has a, a project with students and it's successful they can they can uh, take credit for it that they uh, they knew how to manage and give the information to the students and but if it failed uh, you know you could blame the students for it so um but it was a uh, it, it was an interesting thing and with Aaron and I uh, interviewing some of the original students uh, especially at Stanford that were in the uh uh, in the microsat and the cubesat program, uh, the best thing to do with the students is give them a general outline of what they need to do and then get out of the road. And they, these students did that. They they come up with uh, concepts and actually made uh, at Stanford, uh, and we got them launched two microsatellites. Uh, but then we come along to the to the CubeSat, and uh, that started out and uh, and has been an amazing success uh, for a number of reasons. But I think the the history was just right at the time uh, for something like that to start because there were actually similar programs started earlier and uh, did not uh, succeed like the CubeSat. But I think it was it was two things. One is the uh, the NASA budget and the the budget for <clears throat> commercial satellites, uh, there just wasn't the money there. And then we hit it just right at the miniaturization of components. And those those two things really kicked this off. Uh, there was some some real uh, challenges that. Uh, Jordy got around in in getting a standard and getting it launched, and uh, and um, he's got some very interesting stories. I I hope this uh, this book gets published that uh, 
people can hear some of these stories. Uh, Aaron has been instrumental in uh, in getting them to um, uh, talk about things that are not necessarily technical, but things that go on in in projects. And uh, it, it will be a very interesting book. But um, as this CubeSat, as we know, has gone from uh, the university generally developing the satellites to uh, commercial uh, development, and it has uh, grown, uh, you know, uh, exponentially. And in doing that, from my standpoint, I think we've kind of lost the idea of, at least from the education standpoint, of being able to get the students to to build a satellite and get it launched. Uh, from my perspective, um, uh, I, I would like to, to move back into the high school and have something very, very simple for um, the students to build and have a guaranteed launch for it. So that's that's one of the objectives I'm I'm working on uh, today, and uh, uh, I can imagine that giving high school students the opportunity to go through something very simple and actually, uh, what I say, have their fingerprint go into to space will have a generation that when they go into the universities can achieve much more in hopefully a shorter time and be extremely well trained to to go out into the commercial industry. So uh, I hope uh, uh, this morning we can talk a little bit about that and uh, and uh, encourage the rest of the uh, universe, so to speak. Uh, um, don't forget that we need to uh, work first with the students to uh, get them interested and and get them educated.